guys, Crypto Daisy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll have a quick look at this little PC there, which is the Melee Quieter 4C. Because, uh, yeah, you might remember on the channel, I've shown you the Melee Quieter 2 like a couple of years ago. And I've also shown you the Astro PC Pro, I think roughly a year ago. And now it is the Melee Quieter 4 four that I am showing you. And I was actually about to buy this thing when Millie contacted me and I ended up getting it from them directly. And why did I want to get this? Since I already had like the Millie Quieter 2 that was working perfectly fine, as well as the Astro PC Pro that also has DC ports with a DC splitter so I can use it to power my equipment as well. Well, I got it because it is now much, much faster than the Quieter 2 and quite a lot faster still than the Quieter 3 because it uses an Intel CPU called the N100, whereas the Quieter 2 was using the J4125, which is really a low power chip, kind of like just enough for a hobby. And the Quieter 3, if I remember correctly, was using the N. 5105, which is a, a good low power CPU, but still like middling in terms of power. The N100 changes everything. And the N100, I did not expect it to see it working in a fanless design because this has the exact same like size and, uh, and shape as the Quieter 2. And the N100 is a more powerful chip that should be emitting more heat. So I thought it was really difficult to get it into a fanless design. And I wasn't looking I didn't think there would be a Melee Quieter 4 with the N100. I was hoping there would be a fanless PC, but I thought it wasn't going to happen. But it happened, which means that I wanted it, which means I was about to click on the buy button by the time Melee contacted me. So this particular PC, it comes, by the way, with a couple of stickers on it, so it looks good. Uh, one of the st stickers says, like, you should absolutely use only the power supply that comes with it, which... I completely ignored. The power supply is still wrapped, even though I've been using it quite a bit already. And you want to remove the stickers because since it's fanless, most of the heat dissipation comes from the case itself. And uh, yeah, so now we have removed the sticker, so we have better heat dissipation. And uh, this uh, PC, by the way, is currently with a $50 rebate, I think $220 US on Amazon. So it is not the cheapest N100 mini PC out there, but it has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, which is really good. It has the CPU and it is fanless and it's the only fanless N100 that I know of. And I really like fanless because it means no vibration when you put it on the telescope. There's enough uh, risk with the fan that's in the cold camera. So here's the Topetech IMX585 in there. Of course, I'll put the links down in the description if you're interested. There are two versions of this, one with 16 gigs of RAM, RAM and the other with 8 gigs of RAM. Do yourself a favor, get the 16 gigs of RAM. But anyway, let's go into the good things and the bad things about this PC. In particular, there is a small down grade compared to the Melee Quieter 2. So let me go into the details. First things first, as before, it comes in this nice little compact box, which contains the mini PC, a quick start guide. Apparently they're also, by the way, going to make a thumb st stick type of PC based on the, the N100. I'll be looking forward to that as well. But that's more because I'm a geek in general. Probably not going to use that for photography. And we also have a VESA mount if you want to like mount it behind a TV. It's not super useful to me. As well as the never used power adapter with uh, the power adapter uh, for the uh, for Japan and US plugs. And, to, and uh, some screws to mount the VESA mount uh, if you need to do so. So it is a very, very nice package, especially with the N100. So now let's go into the performance aspect of it. By default, it is set up with a fairly low power consumption mode of the N100 CPU, meaning it is faster than the Quieter 2 by far and somewhat faster than my Astro PC Pro, but not that much, maybe 20, 30% faster. But like, that's not based on benchmarks. That's just me like testing out the apps, running Nina, taking exposures with my IMX571 camera, and also doing like high-speed guiding on PHD2. That's kind of my benchmarks because that's what 
interests us. But I, what is very interesting is that the BIOS, so the firmware effectively of this mini PC, you can access it and you can change the power limit to something to up to 30 watts of power. Or for me, I put it at 25 watts, which gives a very good balance between power consumption from a mobile battery, temperature, which is like how hot it gets, and actual performance of it. And as before, I was, as with the other Melee PCs, it comes with a USB-C in shape input for 12 volt DC. And I've been able to power it via a power bank like this one and a DC to USB-C cable. I'll put also links to those in the video description, although they will be on amazon.com. And I've bought this on amazon.com co.jp and they don't have the same stuff. So the links that I have below, I have not personally tested. So please be aware of that. But yeah, you get a really powerful PC, powerful CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage that runs on 12 volt from your mobile battery. And I think that's amazing. Now let's go into how can you actually set this to consume 25 watts of power to be like more powerful and run faster. So I'll show you how to access the BIOS and how to make that change yourself. You can access the BIOS of the Melee Choir 4 by restarting it. And while it is restarting, before the Windows loading screen comes up, you want to be spamming the Dell button. And after you've spammed the bell, del button, delete button, um, then you will get to this menu here. And we want to go to, uh, we have to use a keyboard to navigate here. So I'm going to use the arrow button, right arrow to go to advanced. And then using the up and down arrow, I will uh, select power and performance and select with enter. Then under CPU power management control, I will again do enter. And in here, I want to go to view configure turbo options. So I uh, scroll down using the down arrow, uh, click on enter. And what's interesting is the power limit one and two overrides. So I can enable both of them. And by default, you will have a different number here. Uh, here I have set it to 25,000 for 25 watts for both. So 25,000 here, 25,000 there. If you want super performance, you could go for 30,000 for both of them by pressing on enter, then a number with your keyboard and then pressing on enter again. Or we could change it. I think actually for me, 25,000 is a great compromise. So I'm just going to set it up to 25,000. Okay. When we're done, I'm going to use the escape key to go back to the previous menu, then escape key again, then escape key again. And now I have the top uh, main chipset security, etc., uh, available. So I can use the right arrow on the keyboard to go to save and exit. And then I will select save changes and exit, press enter, validate uh, yes. And now the PC will restart and we are done with the power management setting. Okay, now that we've done this change, let me go into the details of the performance itself. What I have done in particular is I have basically taken exposure after exposure on the IMX571 camera, which is a 26 megapixels camera. And it's from TubeTech, excellent uh, camera in general, and I'll put links in the description as well. But it can be fairly demanding on the mini PC. And it is much faster at processing the images, debearing the images, detecting stars, doing autofocus, then the Melee Choir 2, like much, much faster. There is no comparison. And another thing is I tried it with uh, my guide cam, but I've noticed that my guide cam at full uh, uh, resolution, especially because it's a color camera these days, don't ask. I've already featured it on the channel. I'll put the link above if you're interested, but it's a color uh, sensor, so it gets debayered. And so when I was trying to take like 0 0.5 second exposures for really high frequency guiding for mounts like this one, which is a, a harmonic drive or strain wave gear uh, drive mount like the ZW AM5 or this one, which is the Warp Astron WD20. And on the Melee Choir 2, it can, like there are times when that 0 0.5 expo second exposure, it downloads, it takes time to process. And by the time it starts exposing again, more than 0 0.5 seconds have elapsed. So there's like some lag going on and slowness and you cannot actually have high frequency guiding, which is now possible thanks to the multi-star uh, selection algorithm in PHD2 without caring that much about the seeing. So with that, I had no problem whatsoever. I actually set it to 0 0.1 second, 
no problem. It just blazes through the guiding like no problem whatsoever. It's actually truly impressive. Now, you would never guide that fast, but that really means that you can have no worries about your guiding, no worries about like downloading your images. And if you're using a full frame sensor, like the 6200s uh, MC Pro or MM Pro by ZW, you don't, this is great because it gives you the performance, the oomph you need to really process everything. And so I was wondering, like, can I also do like stacking and processing on it? So I'm out of uh, PixInsight hardware licenses. I have it already installed on three PCs. So I had to use Serial instead, but I installed Serial and then I stacked 66 frames from the IMX571 camera. So that's the 26 megapixel sensor and those were color frames. So I asked Cyril to stack that. So it's debayering, aligning the frames, and then stacking the frames, those three operations that can take quite a while on a lot of PCs. But on this one, with the 25 watts uh, setting that we did earlier, it took 11 minutes and 56 seconds. And it was, I was able to use the PC like while it was stacking, no problem. It felt really comfortable. So that's like where I'm the most impressed is the performance. If you were looking to have lower overhead from your frame by frame, like exposure per exposure, diminish the time that you're losing between those exposures, you need power and that gives it to you. If you want to have high frequency guiding that is really working well, you need power that gives it to you. If you want to do live stacking while you are working on your images, there's you need power that gives it to you. And I think this could also be like a good choice, even if you want to do like to some extent planetary uh, astrophotography, so like video taking in RAW. So quite impressive. Okay, but let's go into the negatives of this because there are negatives, as I mentioned earlier. First, the power input, it's still a USB-C format, meaning you have to have some weird kind of like cable that converts to USB-C from DC. And it doesn't convert the voltage or anything. It just converts like the wires, right? It, it replugs the wires, but there's not that many cables available. And I'm never sure whether they're going to work or not until I buy them. So that's like the biggest weakness, I would say. And another weakness that we have with this is there are only three full size USB ports. So this is because it is the Milliquiter 4C. And I'm hoping they release a 4Q version because the Q version should have four full size USB ports. But right now there's only three and one of them is USB 2 rather than USB 3. So you have two USB 3 ports, one USB 2 port, which is kind of okay because this one I can use for connection with the mount, which doesn't require USB 3 whatsoever. Uh, but it's still something to keep in mind. There is a fourth port, which is available. It also can do display port to your, to your monitor, for instance, if you need as well, in addition to the HDMI ports uh, there. And you can use this one to connect to your equipment as well. And uh, these days you get more and more USB-C equipment like the uh, QHYQ focuser that I uh, showed on the channel before. You have also cameras from Player One that also use USB-C. So this kind of port is getting more and more pop popular. Now, another thing, and this is something that I would like Melee to actually make better because it's something they can do on their side, is that I mentioned that this particular model has 512 gigs of storage. And that's one of the reasons I would absolutely recommend this model with the 16 gigs of RAM and the 512 gigs of storage. So you can store many astrophotos in there. But this storage is actually split into two. You have an eMMC drive, which is not slow per se, but slower than standard SSD drives while still being much faster than a hard drive. Okay, so 256 gigs as the eMMC slower drive, but it also came with a 256 SSD, a normal SSD full speed. And when you do read and write speed tests on it, it's like 10 times faster than the eMMC. So it's really good. But what I was surprised about is that the Windows install, it comes with Windows 11 professional installed by default, and no bloatware at all, by the way, that's a great point. There is no bloatware, no weird software on it. It's like a pure vanilla install of Windows 11. I love that. But going back to the topic, it's installed on the eMMC. That makes no sense. It should be installed on the SSD, which is much faster. Now in practice and daily life, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but still it's kind of weird to me. And I wish that Melee were to install the uh, OS on the SSD in the models that have the SSD. So how do I use this mini PC? Well, I put it on top of my telescope there. Let's have a look. 
So this is how the mini PC here looks when it's mounted on my equipment. And it is currently mounted on top of this orange box. This orange box is the uh, StellarMate Pro, which I featured on the channel before. I'm still using it. It's actually a full control center for my equipment. I don't even need a PC if I have the StellarMate Pro. But for this video, we're using the PC here. And the uh, StellarMate Pro is just used as a power delivery box where uh, it powers the mount, it powers the camera, and it powers the mini PC with the cable that I showed earlier. Now, the mini PC itself, one of its USB 3 ports is connected to my main camera. Another USB 3 port is connected to my guide camera, so I can use it full re resolution at high speed for high frequency guiding. And the USB 2 port is connected to the mount because the mount doesn't need any high speed. And my uh, my focuser back there is connected via USB 2 on the camera uh, hu USB hub itself. So I don't need any additional port. The mini PC, by the way, is connected over Wi-Fi on my home network. So I can have a sync process between my mini PC and my desktop PC. So that my email images are automatically downloaded on my desktop PC, nothing for me to do. I've also set it up so that if it doesn't have any internet connectivity, any network around, and I just restart it or start it up, it will create its own Wi-Fi hotspot for direct connectivity between a laptop and the mini PC so I can control it in the field, in the middle of nowhere, where I don't have any access to internet. And I have another video of, of, uh, on that on that technique, so I'll put the link up above if you're interested, also down in the description. So overall, should you buy this mini PC? Well, if you already have like the Quieter 2, then yes. <laughs> Simply enough, the Quieter 2, it's nice and everything. And unless you're using the full, whole four USB ports at a USB 3 speeds, I it's really, it makes sense to upgrade. If you have the Quieter 3 or the Astro PC Pro and you're satisfied with it, it works fine, you don't feel the overhead, no need to change, don't buy anything new that's not needed. But if you wanted to like do uh, proper real-time stacking or even like light, as photography processing on your mini PC at speeds that are all things considered fine, then yeah, you could absolutely upgrade. Oh, and by the way, my uh, Quieter 2 will become a media center uh, connected to my TV. Uh, so I'm sure like in, in five years when we have the Quieter 7 with whatever CPU, that uh, Quieter 4 will become also a media center PC, but that's something else. So as always, if you don't need it, <laughs> don't buy something new for new for no reason. But if you feel like, oh, this PC is a li little bit slow, I have trouble with remote desktop, sometimes it's laggy, uh, the, there's too much overhead frame to frame and Nina with my full frame camera, or I cannot guide at high speeds, then the Quieter 4C is there for you. And there's tons of other mini PCs with the same CPU in there. They have a fan because they have a fan that they can dissipate heat better. And so they actually have more performance than the Quieter 4.3, but then they have a fan. Uh, I was looking for fanless. I'm so glad that this uh, Quieter 4C fanless came out. And no, by the way, I am not getting paid by Melee, just to be clear about it. It's just, I'm a geek. I love little PCs. They're so cute. And I love fanless mini PCs because they make no noise whatsoever. I can end up using them as a media center, whatever. It's, it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, with that, I hope this was a useful video. Let me know what you think about this new uh, Quieter 4C and whether you'd be interesting in, interested or, uh, in getting it or you're, you'll be waiting for a newer generation of PCs, whatever. It will be very interesting to know. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, you may want to subscribe. You may also want to look at my previous videos for tutorials on how to set up those mini PCs, how to set up the Wi-Fi hotspot, all that kind of good stuff, and also general tips about astrophotography. And you know, leave a like, as always, leave a comment. And if you want to support me, you, and you're planning on buying anything on Agena or Highpoint Scientific or Amazon, then you can lose the links down in the description. If you're feeling really generous, you could join my Patreon, link in the description, or become a channel member using the join button next to the subscribe button. You guys truly make the channel possible. I can't say it enough. Like it's, thank you so much. But more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.